Assalamu alaikum. This is Meera Heen. And today I am here with Rahil Bodla. We scheduled. It's so amazing. We've talked before and I'm honestly a big fan of him now. He's like an inspiration to me. So I am so glad to be here with you. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, Rahim. Such a great pleasure and honor to be here with you. And I would love to learn from you as well because I am your fan. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. So let's hear your introduction from you. And then I think we can kickstart this interview. Absolutely. If you allow me to share the screen, please. Oh, yeah, that would be amazing. Okay, awesome. Let me do that. Right. So a brief intro on my side. So it's a 20 years of work experience started with my military boarding school, with, which is Hassan Abdal Cadet College, and the aerospace engineering at NUST, which is in Pakistan Air Force Academy at Rasalpur. And then I served in Pakistan Air Force for 10 years. I was a squadron leader, was very passionate to study at Harvard and MIT, got an opportunity for two years at Harvard. Uh, we lived in Montreal in Canada, Toronto in Canada, and then I was very lucky to be in this dream program for which I was very consistently working for. They select 40 professionals from all around the world, completed my master's in business management from there. And Tesla was partnered with the school. That's how they moved me and my family from Boston to Silicon Valley, California, where we are based since last seven years. Uh, first two years, I got an opportunity to lead the Model X assembly line for $250 million, could save $11 million for the company, and then joined a startup company, could grow that company from $4 million to $16 million. And since last three years now, I've been working with amazing global leaders like yourself all around the world, uh, helping them, coaching, serving them, um, which is in US, Canada, Dubai, Pakistan, China, Singapore, Philippines, uh, some of the big companies, some startups, small businesses. So that's a big intro on my side. Amazing. I mean, that is, let's just say, a star-studded, you know, resume, right? So I'd love to have you on screen back, right? Now, Absolutely. tell me one thing. How was your early childhood? And what are some memories that you may have? So the early childhood was very interesting. So I was, we belonged to Multan, precisely Shujabad in District Multan, where my father and mother, they both are educationists. So three brothers, we all, uh, my father helped, guided all of us. We all went to cadet colleges. So once I was 11 years old, I left uh, the place, which is Shujabad District Multan and I was in Hassan Abdal Karat College following my elder brother. And at early childhood, I would say what I learned there was friendship, comradeship, collaboration, helping others in a very competitive environment. Like I would say there's less than 1% selection rate, 10,000, more than 10,000 kids apply and only hundred of them are selected. So being in that competitive environment and while we are helping others, learning from them, I think those would be my early uh, childhood memories that helped me to, to help others and be with them and be a leader and be a team member as well. Yeah. And I feel like at times, you know, in our childhood, there, there, there may be some things that are different, right? From, you know, I would say, I hate to say it, but most people's you know, childhood, just the way that we brought up. So what, what is that one thing that you feel that your parents did or, you know, one technique that used to bring you up and yeah. you are where you are now? If that one thing I would say, as I understood, learned from my parents, humility being the mother of all virtues being humble, being appreciative of the other people, how they're helping us and how we can serve them. I think that would be one thing as humility that my parents taught me and I am very grateful to them. Mm -hmm. Amazing. 
And now tell me one thing, and I know that you went to the PAF Academy Rizalpur, and I stayed for like seven years there, so I know that place like wow. very well. I have memories there, like young baby memories. Now tell me, what are what is that one incident or like a memory that you would feel comfortable sharing here with us in the interview today? Right. I mean, we had a lot of. Uh, I mean, those. Four years, three and a half years at Air Force Academy in in Rasalpur, they were the most memorable of the whole life. I made strong friendships there. One interesting incident, I would say, would be that we were we were doing a lot of punishment in the night, and we were doing because that's part of the military training in which, like, they we get physically fit, we go get emotionally fit in regards to taking all the challenges. and uh so early in the morning we were supposed to jump in a in a cold water uh i would say a, a deep pond 11 feet around and that's how everyone would get inside and take a dip and come back it's a dip only i mean but i think that the moment i jumped there my scream was so different as compared to others and, and normally people the other cadets they were not screaming it was so different and it was memorable for me and for them as well as was more like although i did a lot more punishment after that because of that scream but i still remember that early in the morning like around 5 am or something in in a winter uh morning Yeah and you know it's just like for me it was very memorable because my dad he taught cadets so when he did it's like he would also punish them around you know like, what were you doing is like it builds character it builds that i don't know resilience and he kept on saying things and i'm like oh my god what you're doing <laughs> is you know wrong but when i saw these children just you know you know remember those as like sweet memories i'm like yeah you have them made those memories that they have now yeah. now i mean we both i mean i am living you have lived that lifestyle that we have of the military and let's just say when you work very hard you also get the result of it right yeah how was it adjusting from a military environment to you know then a civil environment because it's hard you know for us okay. to just like live that way how was that Yes, I think for for me it was so easy. It was very helpful because I was for most of the time for eight uh, years I was living in Chaklala Air Base in Rawalpindi, in Rawalpindi, Islamabad. So every day in the morning I would do an excellent work at my military organization where I was part of, and mostly my evenings would be in Islamabad. So I would be driving from Rawalpindi to Islamabad, spend. have meetings with these business leaders who were working in the industry in some of the top companies in Islamabad so for me i think it was not much of a transition because uh i was i was actually coaching people in project management professional certification i did that for more, more than 5 years so a lot of people that actively i was interacting with during my uh air force uh time frame as well so i think that made it very easy easy transition because i was already doing it so for me it was not a big change from military to civil excellent friends in military and in civil as well that uh, made during that time frame mhm mm because if now i would imagine that oh my god it's like all of a sudden i'm living in a different place again with a different environment so come oh god yeah. how do i live that way right because it's very different because i was like born and raised that way so i feel like i have more emotional attachment to it as well but i feel hats off to you that you've just uh you know embodied that now tell me what are some challenges that you may have faced when you started working abroad first yeah working abroad some of the challenges were for because initially transition from islamabad to montreal and then toronto and then boston and then silicon valley so a lot of transitions uh, me and my family we went through initially understanding that culture understanding the expectations and perceptions of people was a little bit of challenge for me that somebody would ask me something 
and I would go in a little bit of detail because of my maybe because of my nature or my background or that's how people are raised up in Pakistan that somebody is asking something and would go in a detail like speak one minute and then probably would be the bottom line answer. But here I understood to adapt to the culture that if somebody is asking a direct question, I will have a direct answer to them. And afterwards, I can go in details. But otherwise, I have to give exact, understand the other person, understanding other culture and providing exactly what they're looking for. I think this was helpful for me. It was a challenge initially, but then very quickly learning from others, like being a lifelong learner. That is something that helped to adapt to the industry really quickly. Mm-hmm. And I see, I mean, in the capacity that I'm working and building networks, I see differences, actually a lot of differences in, you know, the work ethic and how people work in Pakistan compared to how yeah. people would work abroad. And for you, it was specifically Canada as well as the U.S., now tell me more yeah. about that. What are differences that you think and what may be the differences that can be improved? Right. That's a very good question, Rahim. Um, so I think uh, I learned a lot of professionalism that uh, meeting those expectations, meeting those goals, providing those results, holding myself accountable to those commitments. These are all the things that I learned, especially in Canada and U.S. Um, one, what's helpful for us is to uphold all the best things that we learned in maybe in our native city, in any school that we went to, any college that we did our un- undergrad from, or whatever we learned in Pakistan. Like we need to uphold all those good, that, those good virtues and combine that with the intellectual curiosity that we learned here in the U.S. So. Once we have both, the strength of both cultures, I think that is, a, that is how we can provide those results. And that, that's how we are true to ourselves and to all the, the other leaders that we are helping. So that's my message would be going through my experience. And you are doing really amazing, Rahim. Thank you so much. And I so love it when you say that. I'm like, oh, my God. Right? Yeah. Um, And, you know, let's like really, really get started about my favorite part. It is Tesla, because it's when I was going through your profile, I'm like, oh, my God. And then, you know, you replied and then, it, you know, it went on to a meeting and then, you know, we talked for quite some time. So I felt like, yes. Yes. And then I came to to know that your dad is my friend. So now this is the time to just kind of like tell it all, right? So let's just hear about the Absolutely. experience and it's just amazing. Exactly, Raheen. And, and once we connected and I found out that your dad uh, is working in Pakistan Air Force and he's a friend of mine and then we connected, we connected at a really very strong level. So absolutely, these are all the values that we share in common. But a- anyone, right now it's a global village. All of us, we are connected in real time. You're in Islamabad, I'm here in Silicon Valley. We can connect anywhere in the world right away, just a click of second. So it doesn't really matter. The time zones, like uh, with all this technology, nothing really matters. So uh, an amazing vision for all the people in Pakistan would be that it doesn't really, your location or physical location doesn't really matter. You can connect to anyone and you can expand beyond the horizons, those boundaries and work at those international global standards and and learn and achieve and help others. Yeah. Now, tell me, you were, you know, you led a project for Tesla and you were also the global product manager, if I'm not wrong. How was that experience? Because, oh my God, when I imagine, I'm like, oh my God, it's so big. Because again, I feel that you are the one person that can tell your experience the best. So I would love if you can like take it away with all your experiences and all your thoughts and the memories that you made along the way. Excellent, Raheem. Um, So I think that my school, MIT, aligned that opportunity for me to become part of Tesla. 
So I was very humbled and honored to be there. So I got an opportunity to lead the Model X assembly line. So because of the nature of that project, the kind of work that I was doing, so I was meeting with a lot of CFOs, CEOs of other companies, other supplier companies, made a lot of uh, excellent connections. A lot of my Tesla friends that we are in touch with at this point of time as well, helping me in what I'm currently doing as coaching uh, business leaders. So my learnings were, a uh, lot of those learnings at Tesla were that there's a lot of work. We are, every time we are, connecting and doing our best in we have seven dimensions body mind heart and spirit and profession and finances and social how best i can do in all seven is something that really counts not one of them it's body mind heart spirit profession finances and social generally out of all these seven the profession is the most important one. Like, okay, and exactly to the question, I was working in Tesla as global supply manager, but that that profession was was it providing me the passion of the heart? Was I interacting and connecting with the with the with the passion of the heart, with the talent of mind, with discipline of body, with consciousness of spirit? So these are all the things that 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 help us to immerse into that experience. Yeah. Some, like I was fortunate to um, be in some of the meetings with Elon Musk um, because of, by virtue of working on that project. Um, interactions, uh, some of the, like the weekly reviews that we had in which I had to explain the project details, like how the Model X assembly line is coming up. All those were, it was a lot of pressure environment. One thing that I, I loved a lot working at Tesla for those two years as a global supply manager, and then three years working as a supplier for Tesla. So all that, like within Tesla factory, I had a five years of work experience. In the initial two years, especially as, as I'm talking of those details, what I really loved was a lot of trust and empowerment. So, there was a team of people who said, Rahil, go do it. We are with you. Any decision that you are taking, we are supporting you. We don't have a lot of time. Like my boss said, I don't have a lot of time. You are in a sink or swim situation. Go drive it and you can do it. So absolutely, those are amazing things. That, that was my first job in the US. And like having, giving that empowerment to a person who is coming from the other transitions, but coming with a background, so I think a lot of that credit goes to my school, MIT, that, uh, that supply chain management and business management program because of how competitive they were selecting 40 people from all around the world that gave that opportunity a line. A lot of people were observing. I was uh, meeting those deadlines, results in those reviews, and that's how it helped to expand beyond and step-by-step step do better and then become a supplier. and then also. Uh, actually that purchasing supply chain management with those relationships, I could become a supplier and do sales. So sales in Tesla factory for three years. So all that was such an amazing experience with the friends there. Uh, does that answer the question? That does. And in fact, I have another question for you. Now tell me, yeah. because I think everybody would have some, you know, I wouldn't say like you're really judging, judging and expecting, but some like slight expectations or would have like yeah. an idea. So what were your thoughts of Tesla before, you know, working with Tesla and what were the after things, you know, what were things that you saw deeper and more closer and then you liked it more and you were attracted to more of just the idea of what Tesla is promoting. I think with Tesla, it was more for me, the culture, the vision from the top leader, from Elon Musk to all the team. And I could embody that vision that we are working on making sustainable transition to renewable energy and we are doing it for the whole world. We are the leaders in this. So I could feel that, that positive energy in myself. So I used to spend like maybe half of my day exactly on the assembly line. So I was not, I've never been a, 
office kind of person that only sitting, only doing or working on my laptop. I used to have my laptop with me and I used to walk on the assembly line and spend time with the assembly line, sit with the engineers on the assembly line, learn, learn from those robots. Some of those inverted robots were doing that excellent work. I like an average walk that I would have within Tesla factory every day was around four to five miles every day, like walking from one place to another. Like some of the time, once I would get tired a little bit, so I would go towards a favorite robot that I had. And literally, this is what I had. Okay, let's take a break. Let's go to my favorite robot. So my favorite robot, what that did, it used to go at least 30 feet, pick up the underbody of the complete Tesla uh, car, hold it up, revolve it like this, bring it like this, and revolve all the way like 180 degree opposite and put it on the other side. So like these seven axis robots, working with them, being there, I, I used to get so fresh, full of energy again, and then hit back to, to the assembly line or to my desk and, and do that excellent work. Like these are all the things that, that I learned in that journey. But learning from those amazing people, from the best institutions, the best in Silicon Valley. So I could, for me, it was helpful to learn how to help them and get help from them. Like we all have our limitation and these are the mindset and strategies that I work with so many businesses. So these were my limitations initially that I would think something has been loose. No, it's my limitation basically. I have to convert that win-lose thinking into a win-win so that how the other person is winning and I'm winning with him or her and we are growing together. So these are the kind of things that, that I, I learned working in Tesla with those amazing people. Um, and, uh, and please guide me, Rahim, that, that if I'm going in the right direction, these were the things you were expecting or something else that I, I can elaborate here. No, these are exactly the things that I was expecting. An amazing answer, I would say. Now, and I really, really want to know this, you know, per personally as well. What was it that inspired you, you know, changing from like a very tech focus to a more of a success coaching? Because for some people, it's a dream. For some people, it can be different. What is it for you? So for me, it's passion and alignment and fulfillment. Passion. I'm really passionate into coaching, into helping other people grow, helping other businesses grow, helping other startups grow and grow with them, and definitely in that win-win situation. So it's passion. I'm very passionate. Everything get, gets back to emotions. Like emotions are the medium for success. So how much emotions do we have in something? So I have... I had actually last 20 years that I just shared with you that that 20 year journey has been a journey of coaching. I've been working with my coaches. I still have my coaches and that's how I'm coached to hundreds of other people. So I think that is one thing that passion helped me to, it was a very clear thought for me that, okay, after I have these milestones completed, I would be doing this coaching leaders coaching businesses full time and that's what something that i had passion the second one alignment i think that journey helped me to be very aligned with with what i'm currently doing i'm i'm no, right now i'm more like in my in my original uh full potential like in my peak performance like this is something that i love once we find something that we love and then we align things with it then that is something we can go way ahead. Because like, for me, it's not, it's not a lot of work. For me, like, it's fun. And once work is fun for us, we can go way ahead. So passion, alignment, and the third one, fulfillment. It makes me really happy. It gives me that fulfillment, the pleasure. Once I see Raheem growing, getting to the next level, and doing these amazing things, and I come to know that Raheem went to this uh, incubation center, and she's part of startups at such a young age. That is something that gives me fulfillment. Yeah, thank you so much. I just so love it when you incorporate 
me into your answers. It just makes me feel special. And I feel like that Absolutely. is one thing that I really have to applaud you for because I feel like t at times you need to make people around you feel special and that is an art, I would say. Yeah. Because not all yeah. people are good at that thing, right? And now tell me, how are your coaching programs, you know, would you want to share something about them? And then you can share more details as to would somebody uh, want to wear them? How can you do so? Absolutely. So the coaching program, the way we launched our coaching program uh, is a monthly subscription. It's a monthly subscription model. So I kept observing a lot of coaches in Silicon Valley, in the U.S., and some of them, they were saying, oh, we cannot work until we have a long-term agreement signed or a contract. Like, it has to be nine months, 12 months, something like that. Some of them were, like, really, like, tens of thousands of dollars. So we initially, right from the onset, we had a vision that we have to do it global so that we can outreach and provide this and reach out to people so that people can reach out to us as well. So that's why I shared with you the seven countries in which we've been working with uh, these amazing business owners and leaders. So that's what was the initial plan as well. That's why we put that as a monthly subscription because, and there's a reason why, because it's so easy for people to meet. So every week we meet for an hour every week on Zoom meeting, just like this. So within one month, we get those opportunities of meeting four to five times. And then people can see, because a lot of people who uh, I had been working with, they said, Rahim, this is my first time into coaching. I don't know how it works. I have no clue. So guide me. For me, it was a journey of last 20 years of coaching. But for the other person, it may be the first time. So they feel so comfortable that it's a monthly subscription and they can get started. And within one month, they can feel it and they can taste it. And then they definitely, once they like it, that's how they keep going. We have not uh, let down a single one. That is just so, so amazing to hear. Now, tell me one awesome. thing. Specifically for your uh, coaching programs, where can anybody reach you out? What platform? Yeah, so generally LinkedIn is the best, which is because that is professional networking. So a lot of uh, a big network that, that we have on LinkedIn. But everywhere, all of our social media handles are very consistent, exactly as my name goes, Rahil Bodla. So it's uh, Rahil Bodla on LinkedIn, and the same on Instagram, the same on Facebook, business page that we have, and the same on YouTube. So step by step, um, like things have been growing it's a, it's everything is based on relationships as i understand in a lot of relationships and word of mouth connecting and people talking about it and that's how i think uh we get those connections that's how they get to know about me we get in touch we have a meeting like this and it's very easy so did i answer your question yeah that did and for the last question of this interview Thank you so, 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 so much for joining us. It was Thank you. just Thank a you pleasure so being yeah. here with you because it felt like I'm talking to somebody that would understand yeah. me. And I mean, I think you'd love to hear this, but it was some talking like somebody my age, uh, yet more yeah. wiser and has more experience. Yeah. So now tell me, what is the last message that you'd like to give to all the younger people that are in the audience? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. And this is the best question, Raheem, that you asked. And we work with a lot of startups and young business owners or businesses, startups who are trying to start. My message to everyone, actually, because everyone has a passion. My message to everyone would be work on three things, passion and then effectiveness and sustainability. First, identify what is your passion. What is something that you really love? Something that really gives you fulfillment. Identify that passion. Take that passion to a level of effectiveness. What effectiveness means is not Rahil saying about himself. What others say about Rahil's work. Effective, effectiveness. What other people say about Rahil 
Raheen, once you do this, you do it really amazing. And the words needed, that is effectiveness. And then push through. We should be able to, we must have that art and science to convert our passion into a profession. To, to push through sustainability, we should, pay, we should get paid for providing that value to people all around the world for something that we are really passionate and we are also effective because we do it really better than others. We are adding value to their lives. So passion, effectiveness, and sustainability to push through sustainability to make that passion as their profession. So this is something that I would have as a message to all of our audience. Um, did that uh, connect in regards to uh, as, a, as a message that we were looking for? Yeah, definitely that did. Thank you so much for being on. It was an honor having you on. And now I can brag that I was here with Rahil Bodla and I'd never give no, an opportunity to do that. Thank you absolutely. so much. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. If you'd want to reach him out, you can do through LinkedIn and he also has other social media platforms. So if you'd want to reach me out, do the same, honestly. Uh, and yeah, that is it. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you so much, Rahil Bodla, for being here with us. Any last words that you'd thank like you to very say much, to Rahim. the audience? Thank you very much, Raheem. Exactly. So we have the, the contact right here. Uh, it's very easy to reach. Uh, thank you very much, Raheem. It was such a great pleasure to be with you here. Such an honor. And would love to stay in touch. Thank Everyone, you so much. Thank Goodbye, you everybody. Thank you. Sure. Bye.